up to a certain level of exposure because if they um, lowered it, then military personnel would be exposed to levels that were legally too high and they could sue them for damage that had occurred. Did the radio network act in more of a responsible manner with their transmissions once the residents were forced to accept their offer to reduce the FM to one station in 20 months' time? No, they didn't, and, and it's quite extraordinary because if listeners want to Google Aruria, I'll spell it for you, O-U-R-U-H-I-A, and look at the document Hidden Dangers from Communication Towers, Pylons, and Cell Phones, our story is recorded there with the case stories and scientific research supporting the claim that the New Zealand standard is not safe. But in 1999, after our, our appeal court hearing, when the um, radio network actually knew they'd presented misinformation into the court, which we later discovered, but they knew that, industry applied to have the standard increase, so it was going to be higher exposure for people. And out at, at my farm, the radio network actually increased the transmissions of, they increased the power of the FM that was there, they increased the AM and increased the power, they put um, uh, what's called a, a scalar parabolic reflector on top of it, which people who are more qualified than I am would know what it actually does, but it means it's very directional, and um, in 2004 the Targai wire was utilised for AM transmissions, which again increased the exposure at my farm and made it impossible for us to, or anybody, to actually live and use the land. Did the council ensure the radio network uh, now complied with their required duty of care with the monitor uh, for safe exposure? No, no. The council have always turned a blind eye to anything your rear operators wanted to do and they never monitored clear sign line of sight to any of the exposure from 1996 to 2011. And um, it, it, they just, it, it was like they, they just had a different law. I actually wrote recently to um, the current Minister of Communications to ask him why the radio network were actually allowed to operate at double the power to anybody else and why they were allowed to increase the emissions at Sugarloaf, which is clear line of sight across Christchurch, to 49 dBWs, which is 73,000 watts. And the Minister for Communications wrote back and said, um, as far as he was concerned, um, industry did not have to present reasons why they were increasing the power. So that just actually shows what I'm talking about, that here they had this evidence from us, and in 1999 there was serious harm occurring, and yet this company is allowed to have carte blanche to do exactly what they want, whenever they want, with no reasons given for anything. Hail the corporates, eh? Well, what is even more terrifying is that the Minister for Communications um, was actually um, previously set up his own radio stations and made $6 million selling um, his own radio stations here in Christchurch. Ah, oh, wheels within wheels. Yes, that's right. Mm. Penny, in October th 2002, you uh, presented a claim against the radio network in the High Court. Uh, why did you wait so long to do that? Well, we actually didn't have any evidence to show that um, at that time, which is why we'd actually been forced out of the Environment Court, because what they'd actually told us was mistaken evidence, but we didn't, we didn't have the evidence to show that until 2002. Um, but they actually put a sign up in my paddock after the Environment Court hearing to say, a big sign that said, danger, do not enter from radiation. And yet they'd said that that paddock could, ne you know, could never cause harm to anything on my farm. So that was a, a bit of a turnaround. Um, and then um, I was actually, I went into the council after I'd seen that sign to, to see you know, who'd let them put the sign up and what it was all about. And I actually found a report in the council which was um, a national radiation monitoring report that the judge had made them do after the Environment Court hearing, after we were pushed out of the Environment Court hearing, and that showed that the National Radiation Laboratory had deliberately presented misinformation to the court, that the emissions did not decrease at the boundary, they increased higher at 800 metres and even higher at 2 kilometres and were higher than the conditions of the consent. And um, then I had the evidence to show that they were, you know, not operating in the, in the way they'd said, that everything they'd presented to us was actually lies. Okay. 
did these readings show that Dr. Cherry in 60 minutes earlier, much uh, readings were correct? Yes, much higher readings? yes, they actually did. The power records, you know, National Radiation Laboratory had said that Dr. Cherry in 60 minutes had used the equipment wrongly, but it turned out that it wasn't that the that they'd used their equipment wrongly, it was that the National Radiation Laboratory had deliberately presented misinformation and uh, photographs we took of all the listed sites that they'd monitored. In 2006 we took these photographs and it showed that all the monitoring sites were actually taken behind buildings or under trees. Now anybody in the US who's actually getting anybody to actually do any monitoring, you must be very aware that you must be clear line of sight to these towers and that if you've actually got metal, any involvement with metal that you're wearing or standing in front of increases the exposure hugely. So if they take readings at the side of a car or behind a car, it would be much lower. If they take readings in your room that's not where the window is, um, it would be much lower. It, I'm sorry, if they, if they take the readings where the window is, the readings would be higher. You have to be clear line of sight to the tower. And they often take the readings at ground level, whereas if you're in a two- or three-storey building opposite these emissions, it comes out horizontally and would be much stronger in the rooms than where you, you are. If you're mm. sleeping on a, on, a, on a bed at night with a frequency, you can see the tower, the tower can see you, so you're in the exposure lane. If you have um, a metal frame bed spread, bedstead, you will be exposed to 4 to 27 times higher than what they're monitoring away because the metal <gasps> is so conductive. Oh, mental note If you're self, wearing take... metal, if you've got wire rim glasses, mm. I mean, this was all acknowledged by the National Radiation Laboratory in this report that the metal increases the exposure. And since that time, I've gone into this much more intensively and actually found that in 1957, the United States Army actually reported that nobody should be anywhere near radiation emitters if they're wearing wire rim glasses, earrings, anything metal. So they actually know. They know that this increases the hot spots. So if you're using your cell phone and your cell phone, you've got wire rim glasses, that's going to conduct where the wire rim glasses are across your eyes, which increases the effect of UV or color. Or your earrings can focus it straight into that area of your brain where the metal is, or you have amalgam, or your children have braces on their teeth, or a stud in the tongue. Wherever you've got the liquid, it's four times stronger, and when you've got the metal, it's four to 27 times stronger. Now, the cell phone t companies are not telling you this. Well, that's a mental note to myself, Penny. I've just ripped my earrings out of my ears. And in fact, I have been <laughs> a friend yeah, me too. visiting from China. Well, let's hope all I think the important thing is that we should be trying to do what's actually happening and has happened. You see, Russia has done hugely intensive research on this. They, again, did it for military reasons. But they found um, that the effect was so debilitating uh, to the people they exposed it to, the Russian people. They've made much stricter rules than what you've actually got in the US or New Zealand. Penny, I had a friend, a friend visiting from China recently. While we... Uh, uh, these frequencies, um, these frequencies which, you know, are so debilitating that I, I lose use of my arm at I times. Know, I you know, I understand, I sympathise. Well, he started getting blisters where his yep. uh, glasses were sitting and uh, he's right. a frequent cell user as well. So thanks for connecting some dots there for us personally. Well, I think if you use, one of the important things is using a computer to only ever wear uh, plastic frame glasses because if you're using a computer a lot with wire frame glasses, you're obviously increasing the intensity into uh, the electrical engineer who's been helping me. He told me that your eyes are actually like a cave and they've got liquid in them. So it's reflecting and resonating around the bony part of your eye, which of course has tiny little crystals in it. The bone has crystals. And the crystals actually amplify the conductivity. I mean, you only have to think of the crystals they put into communication stuff to actually understand that. Oh, it makes complete sense. And certainly uh, the nanofibers that are in the uh, chemtrails and in our Morgellons sufferers uh, are also crystalline. So that's some oh, okay. research we're going down All very right. deeply at the moment. Oh, yes. okay. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah. it's taken three years to find this out and... And um, <laughs> it's interesting when we all can share the difference in 
Now, uh, Penny, you told us that the 1999 report referred to the National Radiation Lab acknowledging RF interacting with uh, metal increases exposure many times. Yes, that's right. We've just been talking about, actually about that, is, is that um, the Army, the US Army actually knew this uh, situation. It actually explained to me then when I actually saw that as to why my horse's hooves um, were so structurally damaged when the um, emissions were coming in because the horses have their metal shod hooves in wet ground, which is more conductive. And actually, um, the rate. Wow. Uh, okay, folks, we're sorry about the interruption there. Obviously, the telecommunications companies monitoring us uh, didn't like what we were saying there. We've had some interference. We've had to disconnect the call and start again. Penny, we were at the horse's hooves being structurally damaged. Yes, it, it, it was quite extraordinary because the horses um, it literally microwave their hooves. They could change shape completely. Um, it, and a lot of them, they, they could hardly walk where they'd been able to walk before. Very valuable racehorses. And when they were taken away from the area, they got better. But um, the two builders that I had working on my corrugated iron roof uh, one suffered a major cardiac arrest and the other one suffered such bad muscle weakness he couldn't actually lift a hammer and then Bell's palsy. And we also had um, several men who were working near uh, tractors and or on tractors and they died um, while they oh. were driving them around and, and next to them. There were three of them within 1,200 metres of radio tower. Well, oh. there, there, were, there were only 10 people living and working in the vicinity of the radio tower at the time this actually happened. So, it's, I mean, if one had died like that, you'd say it was just one, but when you've got three, oh and since that time, we've got um, um, three people who've had um, eye cancer, had two of the farmers, um, one, one brother died of a, a liver complaint, his other brother has had two liver transplants, and... Um, He's now got eye cancer and cancer of the ear, and it looks very bleak for him. Well, these are the farmers who have been working in the area for some time. Um, I've also since found out that um, Chapman Tripp, who were the legal firm who represented the radio network, were also the legal firm who represented Radio New Zealand. And um, this actually means that under the law, they, they, they should never, ever have been allowed to represent uh, because they were the ones that were in, uh, originally involved in the whole issue. So that's all.